What's up everybody, I'm Jason, and this is the vlog for Friday the 15th of October 2021. I don't have an awful lot today, as there's not that much going on in the world of photography that I'm super interested in talking about. Okay, sure, Nikon keeps releasing teasers about the Z9, but I'm not a Nikon shooter. And so while I'll probably talk about the Z9 at some point, it needs to be released, or at least fully announced before that happens. Though, if last week is any indication, that will happen right after I record and post this. Likewise, the newly announced RF VR dual lens thing from Canon doesn't really interest me that much either, and so I'm not going to talk about it. Instead, what I have to talk about is a week old now, and would have been a perfect thing to add to last week's vlog, only I didn't come across it until after I had already completed, edited, and posted it. And... I just couldn't bring myself to shoot a pickup and go through the whole process again. So I'm talking about it this week instead. Anyway, what I ran across last week was a note from Brian Carnathan, I hope I get the name right, of the digital picture that ha he had heard back from Canon about the focus shift issue that he was seeing in the RF 100mm f2.8 LIS USM macro lens. So a quick bit of backstory if you're not familiar with this. When Brian tested the lens originally, he noticed that, at least at high magnifications, when stopped down to an aperture between f2.8 and f11, there was a significant and noticeable focus shift. If I'm getting the story right, he got a second lens, tested that, assuming that he might have had a bad copy for the, in the first lens, and he saw the same thing. Armed with, with that, he went to Canon USA with the info and the tests, and apparently that ultimately filtered its way back to Canon's lens engineers in Japan. The short of it was that the issue he saw wasn't due to a bad copy, and it wasn't inherent due to the SA control ring, but was inherent to the design of the lens. Further, at least according to Brian's update post, no production changes, which is probably not ever going to happen, any, you know, wouldn't have ever happened anyway, uh, to the lens or firmware updates to the lens and camera are anticipated. And quite honestly, I find this to be a disappointing response from Canon. Though to be perfectly clear in reading Brian's post on the matter, it's not at all clear to me whether Canon said not to expect firmware, or firmware update or fix, or Brian was saying that he doesn't expect Canon to release a firmware update or fix. That said, I don't see why this can't at least partially be fixed in firmware, uh, either in the camera or in the lens, or for that matter, why this ever shipped in the first place. This isn't the 70s anymore. Lenses aren't just chunks of metal and glass that are entirely dependent on simple mechanical systems to move a focusing element. And where everything has to be collect corrected in optics, or the optical design at the time that it's designed and can't be addressed in software sometime else. For that matter, we're well past the 90s at this point, too. Microcontrollers and firmwares in the lenses are almost certainly much more sophisticated than you would have found back then, and probably more sophisticated than many of us would suspect they are now. Between managing one or more ultrasonic focusing motors, the IS servos, the IS sensors, the electromagnetic diaphragm, and reading out and feeding data back to the focusing from the focusing control rings, as well as the distance information, etc., What's happening in the lens is a far cry from applying a bit of current to a motor and seeing what happens to the focus. So it should seem reasonable then that Canon's engineers could characterize the focus shift as a function of focus position and aperture value, and that would give them the capability, uh, and that the capabilities are, should be there in RF lenses. Even EF lenses had the ability to set the po absolute focusing position, and that tells the lens to move, the, uh, basically move the focus p position X, uh, and it could do that from whatever position it was presently in. To do this, the lens has to know where the focus group is and is going to be, it's be able to drive it to where it needs to go directly. If EF lenses could do that, then RF lenses can presumably do the same thing, and being newer and more sophisticated, probably do it better. Of course, I'm making a ton of assumptions here, but it seems entirely reasonable that the lens ought to be able to do this. Other RF lenses have had firmware updates to address issues, including some that addressed focusing. The RF 70-200-2.8, for example, has had four different firmware updates so far. And in fact, firmware 1.0.6 for that lens 
fixed a front focusing condition that was tied to specific subject distances and zoom positions, which sounds very similar in scope to what's needed here. In fact, in reading through the updates for the 70 to 200, it's pretty clear that the lens's microcontroller has pretty exhaustive control over how the lens behaves. Of course, while I say this, and it is the kind of semi-engineered response that I've seen from some others online, the reality is that it's not quite that simple. The biggest hurdle to simply fixing the problem in a lens firmware update is that the spherical aberrations that cause the focus shift do it by curving the focusing field. In other words, the focus position doesn't uniformly move back. Rather, it bends if it, as if it was on the surface of a sphere. The center shifts more than the corners do. And of course, the lens has no knowledge about where the focusing point in the camera actually is. Consequently, if the focus shift was characterized for the center of the frame and you were actually focusing at the edge of the frame, the correction would overcorrect. That said, I see the argument for not doing this in the lens. Since the correction doesn't apply to the entire frame and the lens has no way to know where you're focusing, then you could correct things for some and break things for others. And that alone is probably a good argument for not trying to fix this update, you know, as a lens firmware update. At the same time, I haven't tested the lens, and I'm not aware of any published field flatness tests for it. Uh, there aren't any published by Roger over at Lens Reynolds, Lens Rentals, and DxO Mark hasn't tested the lens either. So I have no idea just how extreme the field curvature is in these affected apertures. Certainly based on Brian's test shots, the center shifts more than a little bit more than a depth of field in some cases. But his tests aren't of proper test targets, which and I'm not sure they include the corners either, so it's hard to draw a conclusion about that from just his pictures. At least speaking for myself, without knowing the extent of the field curvature, uh, a lens firmware fix ranges from reasonable, if the field stays flat enough, to not a good idea at all if it's much more extreme. Of course, I did say the lens might not be the best place for a firmware fi or fix anyway. Then surely the camera side of the house could do something, right? One simple solution might be to just focus with the lens while it's stopped down to the shooting aperture. Sure, this bucks the trend of focusing wide open, which at least under normal circumstances provides the most accurate focusing. However, this is clearly not a normal circumstance. And it's not like the EOS R cameras can't do this. In fact, they already are in at least two cases. When shooting in movie mode, focusing is always done with the lens stopped down. Likewise, when shooting in continuous high drive modes while high speed display is enabled, the lens can, though it doesn't always, focus while stopped down. Canon engineers have said that the dual pixel autofocus system is capable of focusing with lenses as slow as f22, though the 100mm macro can stop down to f32, we're also really only talking about corrections needed down to f11 or so, which is where the focus shift is apparently overtaken by depth of field anyway. And of course, the RF platform can focus at f11 just fine, as the RF 600 and 800 f11s require it to do just that. In fact, I'm quite curious about the interaction between high-speed display. Uh, just not curious enough to drop $1,400 on a copy of this lens just to test it. I've seen several people report that their RF100 macros give them spot-on focusing at all apertures and back their claims up with very in-focus pictures. And that got me thinking. If they're shooting with high-speed display enabled and the camera is uh, the camera very well may be focusing stopped down at those intermediate apertures, in which case that could be fixing the focus issues accidentally. But either way, it seems like it should be hard, shouldn't be hard to add an option to the camera's AF system to allow you to choose whether you wanted to focus wide open or stopped down. Potentially, it could even be limited to just lenses and at subject distance where this is problematic. It certainly would be a better fix, at least in my mind, since the camera is actually able to both measure the focus and would be measuring the focus at the spot in the frame where you're actually trying to focus. Interestingly, this whole situation led me to discover another problem with focus-by-wire lenses in general. The camera and lenses can simply ignore focus ring inputs. When Brian said that 
The workaround was to simply focus the lens slightly in front of the subject. My first thought was that you could focus with the depth of field pre uh, preview on. This was something that I would have considered or wouldn't have considered if we were talking about DSLRs here, but with mirrorless cameras, a lot of the problems go away. The camera will automatically brighten the image to compensate for the light loss, and you can magnify the image up to 16 times in the R5 and 10 times in the R6 just by hitting the magnifier button, which makes it real easy to see if you're getting the focus right. Granted, this really isn't a solution for moving subjects, but for static things like, say, coins, it's not a huge leap in difficulty to hit the DOF preview button and touch up the focus. But there's a catch. Canon currently disables the focusing controls while the depth of field preview button is active. Well, at least it's disabled on focus by wire lenses. Any lens with a mechanical connection between the focus ring and the focusing elements will focus just fine, and there's nothing the camera can really do about it. And it's not like there's a clear technical reason for doing this either. If you're shooting with tethered with Canon's EOS utility, you can control the focus position from your computer with the lens stopped down. You just can't do the same thing with the focus ring on the lens when it's on the camera. Manual focus mode, autofocus mode, doesn't matter. There's no focusing in depth of field preview, at least on the camera. I don't know whether to call this a feature or a bug, but it's certainly a thing. And heck, Maybe this ought to just be a thing in general. Let the camera focus while the depth of field preview button is held. Autofocus, manual focus, it doesn't matter. If the depth of preview button is held down and the AF is activated, focus at the current aperture. This should even be even simpler than adding a new option in the menus. And actually, this is just another example of the kind of give or take in moving focus by wire or moving to focus by wire lenses. On one hand, there's an incredible amount of flexibility and performance to be had by decoupling the focus ring and focusing elements. It's much harder to make a lens that's parafocal and doesn't breathe when you have to move everything mechanically. Going electronic decouples that complexity into software realm where it may generally much easier to deal with. Never mind that moving the coupling to software can be a boon for the focusing experience in general. Being able to ignore the focus ring isn't always a bad thing. I have at times messed up pictures by accidentally rotating the focus ring after focusing. In fact, when shooting long exposures and night landscapes, before I switched to rear button focusing, I would always tape the focus ring in position to keep me from accidentally turning it in the dark. The shift from manual focus to autofocus lenses also refocused the design of focusing systems. The simple reality is that computers are just much faster at measuring and comparing things than we are and could drive the lenses much faster as a result. To facilitate higher focusing speeds, you need a higher gear ratio, or in the case of a focusing helical, a steeper ramp. Mechanically, it's the same thing. Consequently, autofocus lenses have trended towards having shorter and shorter manual focus throws than in exchange for faster autofocus performance. If you look at the manual focus throws of most macro lenses, be they manual focus or autofocus, they're usually in the range of two to 300 degrees, plus or minus a bit. With the electronic coupling, the RF100 macro can have in excess of 500 degrees of throw, or with a couple of config changes, one that's much shorter and responds proportionately to the speed at which it's turned. Either way, there is way more range of control for us imprecise humans behind the camera to work with. What's maybe so confusing about this whole situation to me is that it's not like Canon is afraid of using software to make lenses easier to optimize and design or to fix things. Distortion correction is just that. In the good old days of film, you weren't stretching the film after the fact to make the lines straight. In fact, in the long list of trade-offs engineers had to consider when designing a lens, there was little aside from vignetting, which you could correct for with a custom design neutral density filter that you could simply ignore. Resolution, distortion, chromatic aberration, basically everything had to be dealt with optically and at design time. There's no flashing affix to brass and glass. With the move to digital, many lens issues can literally be removed in post. This lets the lens designers focus more on things that can't be fixed or added back in such as resolution while compromising on things that can be fixed with fewer compromises like vignetting, distortion, or chromatic aberrations.
Of course, last week's grumble was that Canon's lens designers are now relying so much on distortion correction, at least for their entry-level lenses, that they aren't even bothering to make lenses that cover the entire sensor at the widest focal length. While I consider this a step too far, it clearly isn't for Canon. And all of this is by way of saying that if they can rely on software to turn a mechanically vignetting mess into a frame-filling image, I don't see why they'd have a problem relying on software to fix a focus shift like this one. Think of it as a lens aberration and fix it in software like any other fixable lens aberration. It may not be perfect, but there's a good chance that even a partial correction in the lens would work better than none at all does. Of course, in the end, the big open question is really whether Brian was told that they're not going to do anything, or if he was inferring that from what he was told. He didn't post the emails, and I'm not suggesting that he should. For that matter, I'm not even sure whether the people he talked to were even in a position to know, or more likely say, whether there would be an update coming or not. As I noted, I don't think this can be completely solved in the Lens firmware update, and I'd hope that the Lens engineers wouldn't speak for what camera firmware teams would or can or will do. Moreover, I have no idea what may or may not have been lost in the translation either linguistically, or more likely in the layers of management that the communications almost certainly went through. Personally, what I'd like to see is a fix in the form of an R-series-wide firmware update that allows you to focus while the lens is stopped down. Whether this is an added option to the AF menu that you can toggle on, or is activated by holding the DF DOF preview button while trying to focus, I don't really care. Although I like the latter better. So that's my grumble for the week. Of course, I could be completely missing something here too. Just because I've read an optical engineering textbook doesn't make me an optical engineer. Anyway, if you've made it this far, thanks for sticking around. I hope you didn't mind the format this week, but the first time I attempted to record this, it turned into an incoherent rambling mess. If you have a 100mm macro and love it, or hate it, or are putting off getting one because of this, let me know in the comments below. If you found this interesting, or maybe a little informative, let me know by hitting that like button. Also, maybe consider subscribing. If you absolutely hated it, double click the thumbs down. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.